Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, saints of the most high God. Good morning, all of you, the citizens of the kingdom of God, citizens of the kingdom of God, not just members of a local church, but citizens of the kingdom of God. Do you see yourself as that? Do you see yourself this morning as one who has arisen with the understanding that I am a citizen, blessed to be a part of the kingdom of God? You serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We honor him on this morning. Good morning to our morning manna ministry table. May the Lord bless you for your presence being with us on this morning. We're certainly grateful to have you with us. We honor our Heavenly Father on this morning because he is our maker and our creator. We praise him for the one who is his son, who is our savior. He is Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. We bless him on this morning for granting us access into the kingdom, extending the scepter to us by virtue of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I honor him. I reverence him this morning and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm grateful for the Holy Ghost, the spirit of the living God. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. He is abiding on the inside of me. The spirit of the living God is the reason we are able to to proclaim victory in Christ Jesus. I'm really hoping you all are walking in the spirit and embracing what God has done for you and I. And I trust and believe that the Lord is going to do great and mighty things in your lives this morning. And as he sends forth his word, we're just excited about what God is going to do. Hallelujah. At the table this morning, let me say good morning to each one of you. Good morning, Allie. Good morning, Sister Camilla. We appreciate you. Good morning, Lady Rollins. May the Lord bless you. Good morning, Gloria and Rich Shaw. Hallelujah. Evangel Elder Brockington is going to be with us. Good morning, dear. She's going to come and bless us on this morning. Lady Cole, good morning to you. Evangelist Charlene Carter, good morning. Amen. Sister Brenda Peters, good morning. Pastor Shelley, good morning to you. Sister Tracy, Nikki, good morning to you. Hallelujah. Leola, good morning. Deacon Yarborough, I appreciate you, sir. Good morning. Amen to each one of you, Sister Walthour. Thank God for you. Sister Lorraine, it's good to see you, your presence here with us this morning. Sister Vicki, good morning to you. Come on, we appreciate everybody that's coming in. I want to take a moment. Bishop Simpson is going to be with us. He's with us this morning. We're grateful to have a man of God back at the table. Good morning, sir. How are you this morning? Blessings. God bless you, sir. Praise be to the Lord most high. I'm really thankful to God. And you know, you and I have spoken uh, this week uh, on multiple occasions. You know, I have to give God thanks for keeping us. Got and it. specifically, I thank God for keeping me. Yeah. Uh, coming down from the mountaintop experience of the, <laughs> of the, you know, consecration and elevation of two bishops, we give God thanks. And I tell you what a time Yes. We have had, and I do believe God has some greater things in store for us. Amen. I, I believe it without a shadow of a doubt that he does. You know, I'm, I'm so glad that God distributes, I'll call them blessings, uh, their covenant promises. But I'm so glad that he distributes them according to his will in our lives, that he doesn't bombard us with all of these blessings all at once. But it's like that, that, that song, he's an on time God. It's like he always shows up right on time, provides what we need in the midst of what we're facing. And right. Bishop, at, with each day that I grow and with each year that I grow closer to him, I'm learning the value of trusting him more and more for everything, everything in my life. Mm. And my trust in him calms me down. Yes. My, my, my trust in him. Oh, brings an overwhelming peace in my life, which is why I don't understand people who panic. I'm not, not people, children of God, born again believers. I can understand people in the world who really don't have a relationship with him. But if you, if you proclaim to have a relationship with him, I'm not saying you are not nervous at times. I'm not saying that there are things that trouble you. I'm saying we should not be overwhelmed by any circumstance if our relationship with God is as we proclaim it to be. So we're, we're grateful to the Lord uh, and just excited, Bishop. Man, it's good to see you. As always, good to have you with us. We're about ready to pray for the saints, but I want you to take a moment, greet them, 
as you have. I know they missed you on Monday, but it's glad to have you back with us today. Well, I, I want to say thanks to uh, all of you who pray for us because it, it, it truly, it truly does um, resonate with me. I don't know about anyone else, but it resonates with me yeah. when the when we take time to pray one for another. And, and it's and it's and it's also wonderful to know that that the prayers of the saints availeth much, because yeah. therein lies the true strength of of our Christian relationship with our heavenly creator. You know, God, God promises us that if we touch and agree on any one thing, he said he would do it. I don't know why we don't really gravitate and embrace the text when he says, if two or more of you come together in his name as touching and agreeing on any one thing, he said he would do it. And so I, I set before you today as a living testimony to say, I know what the power of prayer can do because we see it manifest itself right in front of us. Hallelujah. And it's, it, it is high time that we acknowledge that there are things that we don't understand, but yet and still, if we but trust the word of God, we would realize that God will always be true to his word. He cannot, the Bible says, he cannot lie and he cannot go against himself. So what he what he has said, it will be so. So I, I would just say to everyone, learn to rest in the word of God. Learn to rest in the word of God. Amen. And so, uh, so again, Bishop, thank you, sir, for uh, always uh, being humble enough to let this man sit with you <laughs> and, and uh, gracious enough to allow me to serve along your side. Amen, amen. It's always a pleasure to have you with us, Bishop. And we certainly do appreciate the Lord. Before we get ready to get into intercessory prayer on this morning, certainly want to appreciate some of our special, I call them special visitors, guests at the table. Bishop Roderick Love was with us, his eminence was with us at the convocation and consecration. And Bishop, it's always good to have you drop in with us, sir, and spend some time with us. I do appreciate you, man of God, and love you, and thank God for your presence. Pastor Joseph Jones, amen, amen. It was good to have you with us every night. Then to have these men of God stop in, Bishop, and just share. Uh, I, I, we don't get a lot of, you know, sometimes we get in these pipe, we get these titles and positions, and we think we can't be taught. You know, we, I don't know what's up with that, but we do. We think, that we, we think we can't be taught. But man, shoot, I find somebody who I glean from, who I enjoy their teaching, their preaching. I don't care who they are. They're my peer, you, you know, and these men of God who come. And man, I, 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 I think God would have us to really understand the value of, of, of gleaning from one another. And so it's grateful to, I'm grateful to have you with us, Bishop. Listen, as we get ready to pray this morning, sir, yesterday, last night, I was inspired by the Holy Spirit to just jump on live and talk about yes. uh, this particular subject that I want us to pray about on, on this on this morning. Uh, when, 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 when Solomon says uh, this, when he makes this statement, it, it, it strengthens and blesses my life. And I think we ought to really, really, really attempt to understand what he was trying to convey when he says there is a way this is a very powerful scripture because solomon is saying y'all think y'all smart this is what he really he's really saying you all think you're smart and so you come up with your own methods you come up with your own ways you come up with your own choices you come up with your own decisions and because it feels good to you mm -hmm. because it appears to be right you think that you're successful you think that you got it but he wants to remind us there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but by the time that thing finishes doing to you what it was designed to do, you'll end up realizing it was a way of death, not physical death. But I think of the relationships that have died, Bishop, because we thought we were right, because it felt good to us. I think of how many negative things have happened in the lives of the children of God, because we took a way that felt good. We took a way that seemed good to us. And so I want us this morning, as we pray, to consider our ways, consider the way you and I, because he, he comes back again, Bishop, and says, when a man's ways, choices, decisions, mindsets, when a man's ways please the Lord, not that man, because I think you can admit, Bishop, there are a lot of ways that I decided that I knew pleased the Lord. 
his word, his will, his ways. They pleased him, but they hurt me. I didn't always want to go and ask for forgiveness. I didn't always want to forgive. I didn't always want to do the will, the word, the ways of the Lord. But when my ways pleased him, he made even my enemies to be at peace with me. So I've learned, Bishop, to trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not to my own understanding. And in all my ways, acknowledge him and he would direct our path. So this morning, Bishop, as, as you, you respond to, to this, I want us to pray this morning and consider your thoughts mm -hmm. while we're praying. <clears throat> consider your speech, the words that come out of your mouth when you're in, when you're vulnerable and you've been hurt and you've been wounded. How are your thoughts compiled? What words are coming out of your mouth? And consider your lifestyle, the walk, the way that you choose to go, the decision. Bishop, we need to pray for the saints this morning, ourselves this morning, because many of us, we don't consider when we get hurt. We do what we want to do. When you get hurt, you become vulnerable. When negative things happen, when you're in your trial, in your pit, when you're in your situation, most of us don't consider before we make that choice. Your thoughts, Bishop, as we begin to pray. That, that, that therein, therein lies, Bishop, uh, something that I believe even, even written over in the book of Romans, the, uh, the uh, sixth chapter, the 21st verse, there's a question that is asked. It says, you know, what fruit did I reap at the time from the things of which you are now ashamed? And then it says, because the outcome of those things is death. You know, the, the simplicity of the of some of the stuff that we do, we we don't really consider when we're going into something, the outcome of something. We simply do it because we're reacting to something. And God says, I need you to learn to pause. I need you to learn to pray and then listen to my instruction. We don't do that well. We let's just be honest with you, you know, we do not do that well. So God is asking us to learn to listen to his voice and then consider what he's instructing us to do. Because I, I, I've learned something about my Lord and Savior. He Hallelujah. will never lead me somewhere Hallelujah. that is going to cause me to be concerned about the destination. Hallelujah. Scripture tells us when, when, when David wrote, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. Not might be, not that I'm considering him to be. But yes. the Lord is. He made a definitive. He decided. He had made up his mind that no yes. one else could lead him. Nothing yes. else could lead him. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. And he said, I shall not lack anything. I should not want. And then he says, and he leadeth me. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. Hallelujah. So I think it's high time that we admit to ourselves that we can lead ourselves somewhere. And that place that we're leading ourselves is not where God is trying to take us. So it's time for me to turn around. Lord, where did you want me to go? And then when he, when, when we heed to what his instructions are, therein lies the right direction to go. Yes, yes. I want to say this because I really feel inspired before we get ready to pray. Bishop, I believe that it is the enemy's desire to confuse us so we won't consider our ways. And so whenever your trial feels so enormous, whenever your situation feels so challenging and difficult, it confuses you. You become frustrated. You become vulnerable. Right. You have to deal. You know, questions loom in your mind. Why is God allowing this to happen to me? The whole mm -hmm. intent of the enemy is to cause you to become so discombobulated in your mind that you don't calm down so you can consider the choice you're about ready to make. So you right. can consider the words that are getting ready to come out of your mouth so My that God. you can consider the steps you're getting ready to take. How many times have you apologized because you didn't consider? You or how many times had you had to repent because mm -hmm. you didn't consider? Mm -hmm. And Solomon is saying, listen, there is a way you could make that. All things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. Mm -hmm. And as a child of God, the anointing that's on your life, every time, Bishop, we make a choice to follow after our flesh, we lose a degree of reverence on, on concerning the anointing that's on our lives. I want you to think about that this morning, morning manner, that every time you make a decision 
in which you have to apologize for. Even though your apology may be accepted, it does not leave the mind of the person you offended. You, off you offended them. You with the title preceding your name. You with the collar around your neck. You offended them. And they didn't expect that from you. They didn't anticipate that from you. They could accept it from someone else. But when you and I name the name of Christ, Bishop, this is why we must become extremely careful on our responses. My apology has a little bit more different weight, Bishop, than Brother John's. You know, bro Brother John is Brother John. He He's right. Brother John. I didn't expect that from Bishop Benton. Brother mm -hmm. John, I could probably forgive Brother John. He's young in the Lord. He's, you know, he's he made some bad choices. But when Bishop Benton offends Jeez. me, when Bishop Simpson offends me, when Pastor so-and-so offends me, when Evangelist so-and-so offends me, when you who have been, you've carried the weight of the name of the Lord on your life, your, your offense is viewed quite differently than someone else's. So this morning, yes, yeah, this morning, uh, you're right. There's a scar left there, Gloria and Rich saw. And uh, we, we want to get to to that on this morning. Bishop, let's begin to pray on this morning. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you, God. Jesus. Bless your name, Father. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you for the gathering of the saints. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. We give you glory this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on this yes, morning. Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, I don't Lord. need to hear you to know you. I yes, need to sense your presence. I sense your presence. Yes, in the manner. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. Bless we you, honor Lord. your name, Father. Yes, Lord. We exalt your name on this morning. Yes, we exalt Lord. your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abba, Father, Father, Abba, Father, who art in heaven, we bless you, you your God. name on this morning. We exalt you, we extol you, we glorify you. your name. Your name mm -hmm. is above every name. Your oh, name yes. has been exalted. Your name is above every name. That at that name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue oh, shall confess. We exalt, oh, we lift the name of Jesus, oh, the authority that's found in oh, that God. name the power that's found in that name we proclaim that name we stand on the authority that is in the name of jesus father we bless you now god for who you are in our lives yes become our alpha and our omega our beginning and our ending we know you to be the one who is the one who was and the one who is to come we know Hallelujah. you to be the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, mm. the God of Jacob, the yes, which Jesus. I am, our shield and our buckler, our exceeding great reward. Hallelujah. We know you to be our healer, yes, our deliverer, God. our way maker, yes, our God. savior, and our Lord. Yes, you Lord. Are God, Elohim, hallelujah. Yes, you are the God of our salvation. You're Thank the you, strong Lord. tower that the you righteous run into. into and find safety. You God. are the shepherd. <laughs> you are the God of Thank you, Lord. And we bless you this we morning. We bless your name, God. Two of your servants, Lord, we're gathered here at this table. Gathered Before at your we feet. hear from you, we want you to hear from us. Before yes, we God. hear from you, we want you to hear from us. We want to lift our voices and Hallelujah. tell you thank you. We want to lift Hallelujah. our voices and tell you thank you. Thank we you, Lord. Offer Hallelujah. unto you the sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah, we want to God. offer unto you the fruit of our lips. Thank you, God. Hey, glory. Thank you, God. The fruit Hallelujah. of our lips, O oh God. Receive our praise. Receive our adoration. Yes, Jesus. Receive our thanksgiving. We yet oh, we stand in name, awe God. of who you are in our lives. We are, we are yet in all and thank you, God. you are in our lives and so we're here father thank you, God. gathered together Lord, us, God. to tell you thank you god thank you, god. Thank you for your goodness Bless your thank you for your mercy thank you for your grace mm. your mercies are new every morning Great is your faithfulness, yes, Lord. Christ, God. We bless you for your goodness, your name, the God. children of men. We honor you, O oh God, because you have been beyond good. You have been beyond good. Hallelujah, God. Been God. Hallelujah. All by, yourself. All by yourself. And so this morning, Father, here we are, thanking you for your goodness you, that has been shown unto for us. Your, tender your mercy. love, O oh God. Hey, your agape love, your unconditional yes, love, 
that is displayed to us in your grace, displayed to us in your mercy. You show us your love for us on a daily basis. You show us your love for us on a moment by moment basis. And so Father, God. we're here to tell you thank you. Thank we're you, Lord. We're here to tell you thank you this morning. We glorify you, Lord. God. I join my faith with my brothers this morning. Hallelujah. I join my faith with my sisters this morning. I join my faith with your yes, sisters Jesus. this morning. And we tell you thank you now, thank God. You, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, God. Glory unto you, the highest praise, O God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory and honor, wisdom and power, both now and forevermore. Be extended unto the God of our salvation. Yes, Jesus. We bless you all over this place, God. Hallelujah. Home by home, God. Home by home, yes, wherever Jesus. we may be viewing, uh, we bless you. In our calling, God. God. Thank you, oh God, uh, in our for best, a platform God. to praise you. Thank yes, you, Lord. hallelujah, for a platform that Lying offers us best, time God. to praise you, that offers us the way to praise you, that Ooh. offers us, oh God, uh, an opportunity Ooh. to send up praises unto the God of our salvation. Yes, we Lord. thank you now, Father. Thank okay, you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory for the victory, Father. The all in praise praise thank Lord. you now. I hear you. Yes, Lord, we praise you for the victory. Yes, God. You always cause us to triumph in Hallelujah. Christ Jesus. You always cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Yes, so, Father, we praise you this morning for the victory, oh God, because Hallelujah. victory belongs to the children of God. Yes, God. Victory belongs to the people of God. We, we stand in triumph. victory. Hallelujah. We stand in the place of victory. We yes. fight from the place of victory. We fight from the place of victory. Yes, and we Jesus. understand no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. We declare Every tongue that rises against us we in decree it. you've already condemned. It's our heritage. We receive it. We stand in the name for of it Jesus. and we give you praise for it, Father. Hallelujah. Have your way this morning. Have, Have your way, way this morning. Thank release you, this morning, Father. Let there be a release at this table this morning. Let there be an anointed release at the table. Yes, Jesus. Let there be a vocal release at the table yes, this Lord. morning. Let there be a verbal release at the table this morning. Let yes, there be Lord. a spiritual release, Father, that impacts the hearts and the minds of the listeners. Let there be a spiritual release, Father, yes, that challenges Lord. the very essence of our being. Let there be a release on this morning. Oh In God, the name of Jesus. Be glorified. Yay. We honor your name, walk God. Away from this table with praise on our lips. Yes, that we Lord. Walk away from this table with our hearts being changed. That we yes. walk away from this table with our minds being challenged. That we mm. walk away from this table charged by the being Holy altered. Ghost. Hey, glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Charged by the Holy Ghost. Some yes, Jesus. And transformation will take place in our lives. Right now, God. Thank you for it now, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We in advance. We give you glory in advance. We give you glory in advance. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank Father, you, God. Thank you for your blood this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for the broken body of our Savior. Yes, Jesus. As we celebrate him this mm. morning, as we celebrate the broken body and yes, the shed blood God. of our Savior. Oh, God, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Though our sins be red like crimson, you will make them white like wool. We thank you this morning, Father, for the healing virtue that's yes, found Lord. under the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the healing virtue. So therefore, we pray for uh, we pray for the table. We yes, pray for God. the connection of those at the table. Yes, every Lord. family member of those at the table. My God, we my pray God. God for the divine connection. Holy the, the blessings that flow to the table shall flow from the table. The blessings that flow to the table shall flow from the table, Father, mm. into the lives of family members, into the lives of those, Father, whose health has been afflicted, whose bodies have been afflicted. Yes. We are praying this morning, God, mm. for divine healing. Oh, In my God, I will be under divine healing on this morning. Yes, Lord. Divine restoration on this morning. Divine restoration. Not the healing that comes from a doctor, but the healing that comes from glory. Not the healing that comes from man. Not the restoration that comes from man. But, Father, we pray this morning for we your healing it. virtue. 
We in the name of this Jesus. Morning for Let divine, it rest upon. Miraculous move Let of it pour God. in, God. For a divine, miraculous Hallelujah. move of God. For a divine, yes, God. miraculous move of God. Yes, a life God. Saving a life. Yes, God. Move of God. Oh, in the name Allah. of Jesus. A life changing, life changing yes, God. move. Hallelujah. From the Father God. Yes, that will revive, that will restore, yes, that will God. save God. Hey, oh God, this day, Father, right now, oh, there are family members crying out this for moment, salvation God. of their brothers, of their sisters, Jesus. of their siblings. Oh, God, leave, oh, thank you. You're breaking the will. Mm, hallelujah. The power of God. Yes. The love of God. It's with loving kindness have you drawn them. The loving kindness of a merciful God. Draw now, Father. Draw mm, loved ones to you. Oh, loved ones that we thought would never be saved. Loved ones mm. that we thought would never come to you. Draw them with cords of love. Draw them with the reins of mercy. Mm. Woo! That they may know that there yet is a God that dwelleth in the earth. That My dwelleth God. in the heavenlies. That dwelleth in the people of God. My God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Master. Ghost God. Holy Ghost of God. Spirit Holy of the living God. God. Thank you for resting Holy in us. God. Thank Holy you for God. resting in us. Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living God. Have your oh, way Holy in God. us. Have your way in us. Yeah, Transform yes, us by the renewing of our minds. Transform yes. us Woo. by the renewing yes, of our God. minds. Yes, Go deep, deep down on the inside yes, God. of yes, God. your people. Deep down, deep down. Yes, God. Yes, God. I yes. say yes, God. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, God. Father, renewing. Yes, God. Of our minds, Father. Yes, God. We'll yes, bless God. you on this morning. We'll bless you on this morning. Oh, forgive us, yes, God. God. Yes, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Guide us by your hand, God. Let your servants arise. Let your Guide servants your hand, God. arise, Father. Awaken us spirit, to the God. realization of who you called us to be. Thank Let you, your servants arise in power. Thank Let you, your God. Servants arise in power. Let That's us no more be ignorant, God, to the things Thank you called us to be. Let your servants rise in power. Every one of yes, you who are anointed. Let yes, them rise Lord. in the authority of the believer. The authority yes of the believer. Oh, glory to yes God. To your Hallelujah. God. Glory to God. Let us rise in the authority and the anointing that you have given unto us, Father. Yes, to your Let us not wait again upon men. Yes, to your way. Let us not wait again upon men. The veil in the yes, temple has will. been rent. Yes, to your Access will. has been given unto yes, us. God. That yes, we God. have direct access to the Father. We need Ooh. not wait upon man. You've given us authority. You've given us power to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Mm. You've given us authority to walk in your word. You've given us authority, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Help us, God. Help us now, God. Consider our ways, Lord. Help us now, God. Consider our ways as we sit before Help you, us now, stand God. before you, lay before you, to consider the thoughts that we allow to impact and affect our minds, to consider the words that flow out of our mouths, oh God, as we stand in representation consider of your actions, holiness. God. Stand in representation of your righteousness. Let us, your people, consider our thoughts. Consider mm. our words, oh God. Mm. Consider how we walk before you, oh God. That we walk uprightly before you. Help us now, Father. Help us now. For then will men know that we are your disciples. For then, if we will continue in your word, oh God. Yes, Lord. Continue yes, Lord. in your ways, oh God. If we continue in your doctrine, in your teaching. If we continue in your word, Father. Then are we disciples, your disciples indeed, and we shall know the truth. And the truth we know will make us free, Father. And we bless you this morning. We bless you this morning for the truth that you've unveiled. Yes, God. That you've unveiled. Hallelujah. We say, have your way at this table. Have your way at this table, God. Have your Hallelujah. way at this table this morning. We give you glory now. Father. We glorify you, God. We give you glory now, Father. We magnify you, Lord. We give you honor. We give you praise. Yes, Lord. In the name Hallelujah. Of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. Hallelujah, Thank God. You for your servant. Thank you for being Thank you, Lord. Thank you your for serving his pride. Hallelujah. Thank you for blessing his family. Thank you for mm. blessing his ministry. Thank you for blessing the gift that he walks in. Thank you, God, for your hand being on his life. I pray for every pastor, every leader that's yes, at the table. Lord. 
I pray for everyone who's been set aside to walk in your anointing, God. In Thank the name you. of Jesus. In the name Thank of Jesus. For an obedient spirit. Yes, Woo, Lord. God. Thank you for yes, an Lord. obedient yes, Lord. spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bless yes, us with Lord. your presence this morning, even the more. Yes, Lord. Yes, Bless Lord. Your presence, even the more. Even the more, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Thank Lord. you, Lord, for your word. Shed light now upon your word. Right now, God. Illuminate your word before us. Yes, Lord. Given us revelation. Yes, Lord. Now illuminate God. What you have your word, your written word is the re revelation of you, Father. Yes, God. Now illuminate yes, God. the revelation before mm. us so that you'll be glorified. Thank you, Lord. So that we will see your glory. Thank you, Lord. Give you all of the glory. All of the honor and the praise. All of the honor. Belong all to you, of the God. praise. In Jesus' mighty In Jesus name, we can pray, Father. In Jesus. Hallelujah. That the In saints Jesus. of God give him glory. Let Hallelujah. the saints of God give him glory. Let the, the saints of God Hallelujah. give him glory. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 We say Hallelujah. thank you, God. I hear the Holy Ghost. We say thank you, I hear the Holy Ghost, morning man. I hear the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, you Lord. Virtue, God. This Hallelujah. is not the season to walk in ignorance. Mm. This is not the season to walk in ignorance. You cannot afford to be an ignorant worshiper or to worship ignorantly. My God. You cannot afford to be an ignorant worshiper or to worship ignorantly. You cannot lift your hands before God without understanding to whom it is that you're lifting mm. your hands. You cannot vocally send out words when you are ignorant to whom you, you are speaking to. You cannot afford in this season to be ignorant of the God that you serve. <clears throat> This is not a season or a time for you to be ignorant concerning the things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To walk in ignorance, the apostle Paul said to us, we are not ignorant concerning the devil's devices. You cannot afford to be ignorant. You cannot afford to get your illumination, your information concerning the things of God from a Facebook post. You cannot, you're going to have to get to the place where your information, your illumination of the word comes from your private, personal, intimate time that you spend with God yourself. God wants to... That God wants to have you in that closet, have you in that personal time with him so that he can illuminate himself to you, unveil his glory. To, you're going to need him personally. Please hear me this morning. You're going to need him personally, personally. There are going to be times when a Bishop Simpson cannot be around, when a Bishop Benton cannot be around, when your pastor cannot be around, when, when nobody is around and you have to make a decision and you have to chart a course and you have to walk in a level of obedience and you cannot depend on man in those moments. You cannot depend on man in those moments. Hallelujah. 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 Oh my God. My Hallelujah. God. My God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My God, my God. We are not here to make you followers of us. Followers of Christ. We are not here to make you followers of us. If you are part of this table and you come to the broadcast, praise God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Praise God. You're going to hear God through the man of God. You're going to hear God through. We are not here come for on. you to follow us. Hundreds. I repeat what the Apostle Paul says. Will you follow me? You've got to be following. Follow us as we follow Christ. You, you, you should be here because you want a closer walk with him. 
My God. You should be here because you want to learn how to have a more intimate, personal, eternal relationship with the God of all glory. You have got to you have you have got to get to the place where you trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Amen. Lean not to your own. Amen. Amen. Bishop, your thoughts this morning before Amen. we flow. Bishop, I was, I was, as I was listening to the spirit of God resting upon you, I was led to, I was led and reminded. Let me, let me say it that way. I was led and reminded of Micah 6 and 8. The Lord says he has shown you, O oh man, he has shown us. We cannot even plead ignorance. That's the thing, Bishop. We yeah. can't even plead ignorance. Even if we open our mouth, the Bible tells us that we can look at the creation and realize that there is God. We, we, can't, we can't even plead ignorance that, that there is no God because the scripture says only a fool How will say it is hard that there is no God. But the word of God says in Micah 6, that he has shown you, old man, what is good. Yes. And then he says, and what does the Lord require? Yes. What does the Lord require of you? Come on. And that's the, and and though though the man of God was speaking to the to the entire uh, tr uh, all the Israelites, yet when you look at it in a singular perspective, because God is speaking to you, He speaks to me. He said, "You you know what I require of you? Yeah. I've already shown you what is good. Yes. Sir. And that is, I'm God. I'm good." So to look to anything else but me is to look away from me. Yeah. So he says, look to me because I'm the only good thing that you'll ever see in your life. My and he God. says, here are my requirements. He says, all I want you to do is to do justly. Yes. And to love mercy. Hallelujah. And then to walk humbly with your God. Hallelujah. That's, do the, that's yes. the requirement, Bishop. I love that. I love that verse. Hallelujah. I love that verse. Walk humbly with the Lord your God. We, 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 I'm, I'm going to really do my best. Lord, help me, help me. Mm. Because we are fighting against years of erroneous religious teaching. This is not a statement of self-exaltation. It's a fact. We are fighting against years of erroneous religious teaching. And when many come to the table to sit, Bishop, and they hear truth, Jesus said something powerful in John chapter eight. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And a lot of people have not continued. We sat there, listened. I sat at in pulpits. I sat in pews. And Bishop, I must be honest, when I would hear certain things, it was it 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 called it, it didn't resonate and register in my spirit, but I said amen to it because of a lack of ignorance. But I knew something was just not uh, it was just not sounding right. It sounded good to my ears. It sounded good to my ear. It made me want to run. It got me Ooh. excited. It made Ooh. me wanted to run around the church. But after I settled down, there was nothing deposited. In me, I'm not talking about in my flesh. I'm not talking about in my emotions. I'm talking about that which resonated with me, the word of the Lord, not the emotional impact of the charisma that was operating in the man. There was an oper there was a gift called charisma operating in the man that excited me because of my humanity. Correct. But the spirit of God was saying, son, I need you to get rooted and grounded in the faith. So Hallelujah. when you leave this building, you don't leave me. When you oh. leave this building, you don't leave me. And right, so right. many of us, Bishop, are suffering from erroneous teaching that now we have to go back and dig out, clean up all of that just to be able to lay a foundation of simplicity the foundation of the word. And so today, Bishop, as we approach, uh, as we approach this particular text, as we approach this particular teaching, 
It's incredibly important that we be honest, morning manner, be honest before ourselves, because never before, Bishop, have I seen the level of disobedience that I see today among those of us who are in leadership positions. Those of us who lead, if the leaders, Bishop, are walking in disobedience, can you imagine what they're creating? Can you imagine what they're creating? And we wonder why this generation of leaders is as it is. This generation of the church is as it is because we sat under that, which did not teach us the value of what it means to be obedient. And Bishop, I'm chasing after this. We're chasing after this on this morning. So uh, your thoughts, we're going to break bread. We're going to hear worship. And then we're going into our morning matter. Your, your thoughts, sir. Bishop, there's something liberating about when you hear God's word taught with, with, the, with the understanding that you're giving, a, you're giving people something that is necessary for their lives. That the beautiful thing about God is, is that those, who, those of us, because even myself, I have to say, even me, uh, set under what I call poor teaching. Yeah. But I, let, let me say this also, though. Those teachers that taught us wasn't taught well themselves. So they could only teach what they were taught. Yeah. And so over time, God, he, un, he, he, he puts people in our lives to say, yeah, this is what you were taught. This is why Jesus himself said, you have, you have heard it said. He was yes. letting the people know you heard something. Yes. But it wasn't what I said. Yes. So he said, you've heard it said. Yes. And then he says, but I say. But so I it say. it had to be an understanding oh. mm -hmm. that you were taught wrong, he won't leave you wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God that he sends freedom even in the midst of wrong teaching. He gives us understanding. Hallelujah. Such a time as this, Bishop, I'm Amen. thankful to God that I uh, that I sit with, I sit under. I could never understand bad teaching if I never hear good teaching. Say it, sir. Say it. You will never know a counterfeit dollar bill till you run into an authentic one. What let what helps you to understand that this is counterfeit is when you place it next to that which is authentic. And I believe, Bishop, with everything that's in me, that God is raising up a generation of authentic leadership, authentic teaching, which will jar your memories, which will cause you to say, oh, my God, I never seen it that way, if you would. And it's Ooh. not it's not to be an impressive statement. It is to fulfill what the Bible says we ought to be doing. And so when you read Ephesians chapter four, which we commonly call the fivefold ministry, it's the reality. Right. It's the reality. But these gifts come from the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been pursuing after gifts that we created as man. But there is a segment of the church that the, G, the Lord Jesus Christ himself has called and set in apostles, set in prophets, set in evangelists, set in pastors, set in teachers. You pursued after who you wanted. You pursued that who after your emotions chased after. And God is saying, in many cases, I've never sent you there. I've never sent you there. And so you, 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 you went out of obligation. You went out of feelings. You went out of emotions. And some of you, help me, Lord, help me, help me, God. Some of you, you are in the season of your life when you should be a teacher, when you should be teaching. And Paul, Paul says, I can, you should be in a season in your life where you should be teaching others. But how can you teach others when you yourself need to be taught? I can't, oh, wow. Bishop, I, I, Lord, help me, please, today. Help me, help me, Jesus. I was so burdened and so and so saddened by the when people took Sunday school out of the church, I can't, I, I could not, I, it baffled my mind. There is no way I'm taking, I don't care if it's two people in the church, there is no way I'm taking Sunday school out of church. 
There's no way I'm taking Bible study, whatever we want to call it today, out of church. There, these are the foundational elements that were designed to teach. Did you notice, Bishop? They took the they took the teaching out. That was the intent of the enemy, because you were learning by teaching. You could ask questions. And so every area where you could ask questions, every area where you could be taught, they removed that. But the preaching, the hooping, the hollering, we ain't bothering. We ain't touching that. We, we ain't touching that. The hooping and the hollering ain't going to help you. The hooping and the hollering will not help you. We need to be set at the feet of Jesus and taught. We, could, we, we, we don't want that, Bishop. We want our emotions to be screamed at, hollered at, run around the church, still sit down as empty-headed as you were when you started. Why didn't they take all of the preaching and the yelling out of the church? No, you want to take the only method by which I can ask questions, the only method by which my children can grow? You're going to take that out of the church? No, no, no. Something's wrong with that picture, Bishop. Your thoughts, and then we got to get, Lord help me. Bishop, something is vitally wrong with that picture. But again, the trick of the enemy is to remove those things that God says are essential. I have learned that these are essentialities. These things are essentials. Uh, second, second Timothy 2.15 clearly tells us that we're to study, study to show ourselves approved, that we be workers who need not be ashamed, but ones who can rightly handle the word of truth. So if there is no teaching, if you remove the teaching arms of something, you have literally crippled the people of God because it is those things that we rely on that we might learn from. So, yeah, yeah um, I'm like you, you know, not, not on my watch enemy. You know, it. we're gonna keep teaching. We're gonna keep teaching. Whether you show up or not, that's on you. But one yeah. thing about it, it won't be because it wasn't available. Yeah. Wow. Bishop, let's let's prepare our hearts morning, man. It's Wednesday morning and I know we've laid a foundation, but we've got a lot to, to go and I want you to be blessed by it. Now is a great time to like, tag, share this upcoming broadcast. I know it's going to be a blessing. We're going to serve you the Lord's Supper, break the bread of life with you, Elder. Tamika Brockington is going to lead us in worship, and then we're going to enjoy what the Holy Spirit has prepared for us uh, on this morning. So let's get our hearts prepared, and we'll be right back to share with you uh, the Eucharist, the body and the blood of our Savior. <laughs> left us commandment to go and make disciples of men and this is what we plan to do this is what i plan to do is do everything that's in me whether we make disciples at our local ministry we make disciples at the morning manor ministry table wherever he sends us wherever our assignment is it is to make disciples of men and uh, god designs and god aligns god designs and God aligns. He designs the ministries that he will know will be a blessing for your life. And then he aligns you with them. It's up to you to be obedient to what he has given. And so we come today offering unto you the body of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We do this for our first time viewers every Wednesday morning. 
because Jesus told us, commanded us, that as often as we would do it, we would show his death until he would come again. So we say unto you that on the same night in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me, eat ye all of it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament, new covenant in my blood, which is shed for many. Shrink ye all of it. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Bless you. Bless each one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. He's worthy of praise, glory, and honor. We bless him on this morning. Let's get ready. Let's get ready for our morning manna as we shall receive what the Lord has for us. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, Elder Brockington. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good morning, Bishop Simpson. Good morning, Bishop Benton. Bishop. It's an honor to be here this morning. Good morning. Amen. It's an honor always to have you and enjoy in the morning with us to lead us in our worship. Again, if you are a first time viewer of the broadcast, we certainly do appreciate you being here with us. But uh, these are our worship leaders to prepare our hearts for the reception again of the word of the lord and so we're going to turn it into your hands and let the lord use you on this morning to lead us in worship bless amen you. god bless you god bless you when i think about the goodness of jesus and all that he's done for me yeah. my soul has no choice but to cry out hallelujah and so this morning as we go into worship let's think about the goodness of the lord and all yeah. that he's done for us amen amen yes ma'am Thank you, Father. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me, to the uttermost when i think about the lord how he picked me up and turned me around how he placed my feet on solid ground it makes me when i think about the lord hallelujah yes it did Oh yeah. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up, turned me around on solid ground, it makes me want to shout, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Lord, You're worthy. Of all the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise, makes me shout, Lord, all 
hallelujah. Lord, you're so worthy of the glory, of the honor, of the praise. Come on and think about the Lord. When I think, when I think, yes. oh, oh, oh. raise me. Yes, he did. How he is when I think about how he picked me up and he turned me around and he placed my feet on solid ground. Yes, hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy. Yes. All of the glory, all of the honor belongs to you. Yes. It makes me want to shout. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, Thank you, Jesus. Give me the honor. All the praise belongs to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Lord, we Thank you for your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy of all the honor. You're worthy of all the glory. When I think about the goodness of Jesus, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. All of the glory, all of the honor belongs to you. Come on and work you with me and tell them, Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, I magnify you. You exalt you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you didn't have to do it, Lord, but you keep on doing it over and over and over again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Name, the hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Offer it up hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Hallelujah. All the honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for me. Yes, what a blessing. What a blessing. Thank you so much, daughter. Thank you so much. What I a blessing. Am, I am a firm believer, Bishop, that. Whenever I come to the house of God, the saints will tell you, I always, I'm there for two reasons, two reasons. I'm there to worship and I'm there as a warrior. Mm. Those two, two. I believe that every child of God ought to have that mentality that even when you come to this table and you prepare, you, you're bringing worship, but you're also warring in the spiritual realm. And I don't think a lot of us realize that, that my worship happens more prominently in warfare. Anybody can worship when everything is well. Hallelujah. But when I'm in warfare, there yes, is a God. level of worship that is needed to get me through the warfare. And so, Elder Brockington, when you yes, think God. of what you were singing today, and David yes. says, I will bless him at all times. What is the value for worship for you? What, what's mm. the value? of worship for you and the value of worship to me is that <laughs> it is it's a weapon to me and it's what helps me get through my day-to-day -day, my day-to-day -day, my day-to-day -day struggle as many and i and this is a testimony and as i share my journey with many I, I i'm a caregiver for my mom who suffers with dementia and to watch her go through the transformation that she goes through she's going through to watch her i remember saying to god how Lord, how do you mourn the death of a living person? And, and that's that's what helps me get it through. When I come in this room, my little charage, mm -hmm. I call it, and I begin to worship. And it's just me, it's just me, this computer, and the Lord. And sometimes I hit recording and sometimes I don't. But that's the only way that I know that I can make it is through worship. 
and worship is what keeps me grounded. It keeps me covered. And I begin to think about the goodness of God and all that he's done for me and yeah. my with my soul, my spirit, and all, all I can say is hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the good. And I also thank you for the bad. Because if it wasn't for the bad, I wouldn't be able to endure until the end, as he said so. And so uh, worship, worship is 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 more than just a lifting of the hands. Come worship on. is more than just a singing of the song, but it has become my lifestyle. Is Amen. what I do from day Amen. to day. Amen. I'm with you. It must become lifestyle. We would be surprised. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Elder Brock. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate you being with us on this morning. Such a blessing. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again soon. Amen. Yes, sir. You know, Bishop Worship, I want to take a moment and, and acknowledge, amen, Bishop David uh, Swinson, our first assistant in our yeah. fellowship. Uh, good morning to you, sir. Man, I, lo I love that brother. And uh, I appreciate God for him. Uh, you know, so much happens Bishop, and she said something that I, I think it will be a caveat as we lead into our teaching on this morning, that, that you would be surprised of the amount of individuals in the building, I won't say in the church, in the building who have no divine connection, which ushers in their worship. Right. One of one of my one of my one of my responsibilities, and I can't get away from it, as a pastor, as a shepherd, is to be observant mm -hmm. of the flock, to be observant of the flock. And I watch and I observe, not because I'm nosy, but because I care. And so I can take note, and I know that worship is not always a physical outward appearance, but I know worship when I see it. Right. I know worship when I see it. I know, right. I know, and I know the flock. So thereby there are many because I know them because I am their shepherd and I know the heartache that they're going through. And in my mind, I'm thinking, why won't you worship? Why can't you worship? Worship, Bishop, is, is not a is not an he, he's not asking. Worship is a commandment. We're, we're commanded to worship him, to honor him. We're, we're commanded to do that. And worship becomes this weapon. And I'm watching you and you won't worship. It's not because you don't have access because the veil in the temple has been rent. So it's not like God has not sent out an invitation. It's mm -hmm. not like God has not made a way. He's given you his word. He's given you his son. He's given you his spirit. He's given you all the tools that you need to worship. And so now he's saying out of obedience, right? would you enter into my gates with thanksgiving, <laughs> into my course with praise? Would you come before me with singing and will you bless my name? Because it's not like I'm not worthy. It's not like I'm not worthy. If you look back over your life, if you look at everything that I've not only have I done for you, but who I am to you. Bishop is not what he's done. For, see, our worship is contingent upon what we have or we receive from him. So I feel like if I'm not receiving anything from him or if I'm in a situation that he does not be he does not deserve my worship because where I am physically, he does not deserve my worship because of what I'm going through. You have yet to understand your worship has nothing to do with earthly conditions. <laughs> it has everything to do with your divine connection. I worship him because I know who he is. I could be broke and ain't got a dime. What does that have to do with my worship? I could be hurting, got bad news from the doctor. But what on. has that do? What has what does that have to do with my worship? I am called, Bishop. You and I are called to worship. Your your, your thoughts, sir, as we get ready. Well, let, let's use let's use what you just said, Bishop. The fourth verse of Psalms 100 tells us to do just what you said. It says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Yes, sir. And we're to enter into his courts with praise. Lifestyle. And then we're told to give thanks to him and praise his name. Now, here's, here's what most people don't really pick up on. See, we're coming to get rather than to give. That verse says I'm to come to give something first. My attitude coming into his gates, I'm supposed to be coming in thanking him. Yeah. That's a giving. That is what he's expecting of us. When we enter into those gates, we're supposed to be coming in 
thanking him. See, it was it was it is always predicated on what I am coming to give first, and not what I'm always coming to get. You, we, we're so selfish because it's always about us, me, 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 me. Yes. What what I no no learn to do what he said first, and then you'll get what you're supposed to get. But if we don't ever if we don't ever be obedient enough, Bishop, to come in and give him what he deserves. We will never get what we need. Hallelujah. I promise you that. Hallelujah. So I don't look at this verse as a getting. I look at this verse as a giving. God says to come in and give him thanks. Yes. When I when I walk, <coughs> when I walk into his presence, I'm supposed to be walking in thanking him. He ain't done nothing for me yet. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. I'm not thanking him for what he's done. I'm thanking him for what he's going to do. Hallelujah. So I praise God that this verse needs to be thought of in a different fashion. Yes. And that fashion is, let me do what he say do first. Yes. Then I leave it up to him to do what he do. Yes. There we go again with that erroneous teaching from the past, Bishop, that we didn't take the people of God into the scripture. And you see, it, it, it people, it, in my view, in my view, people in the building mock what they see. They, they're never really taught God. They really never, they're, they're, they're never really taught to know God for themselves. And when you don't do that, you, you, if you watch a child, a child will mock their parents yes, in terms will. of the things that their parents do. It's called learn behavior. And you would be surprised at how many in the church go through the ritual of religion because it's learned behavior. Mm -hmm. We learn how to testify. We will repeat the very words. We repeat the very words given unto God. We repeat the very words that we hear, but they are never or rarely are they based on a personal, intimate relationship with God. Right. And so consequently, what we have produced in the church and what the church, because many of us are at fault individually, and so part of discipleship, Bishop, is to teach the people of God how to have a relationship with him for yourself. You don't you 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 when you so when you come to how to the house of God on a Sunday morning, there is a level of adoration that I bring with me because, Bishop, of what I had at home. Right. Mine is not God. I don't get mine at church. I get mine at home. And I bring my worship to church. I don't yeah. get my worship from church. I bring, this is why praise teams and pastors and other leaders have to fight so hard to, oh, we got to go through, why do we have to go through all this just to get people of God to honor God? The presence should already be set. Do you realize that, Bishop? We, 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 we are fighting to get people of God to worship the very God who they say they have a personal relationship with. It, it baffles me. It baffles me at the things I'm seeing observant in the house of God today. I bring mine with me. It has nothing to do with the chain on my, around my neck or the collar around my neck. Bishop, my worship has everything to do with my relationship. I don't care who I am. I don't care where I am. I really don't. It, when I say that, I mean that with all sincerity, that he deserves the worship, the adoration. And it is out of an act of obedience that we give it to him. Many of you, many of you, because you don't understand that worship is true warfare. And if you let us take our time this morning, I, I promise you we'll get there. That up above your head, there are, uh, there are demonic forces. Up above your head, there are principalities. Whether your head is in the building, your head is at your house, your head is on your job, there are always principalities, mm -hmm. spiritual wickedness in high places who are up above your head attempting to prevent your worship from protruding through that atmosphere to get to God. Because they know, the, de the demonic forces know, if your worship ever reaches the throne room of God, change, change takes place transformation takes place. Divine connection takes place. You cannot stay in that place when God divinely connects with your worship. Your thoughts, Bishop, as we move. 
Well, you know, when, when the word, when the word of God, Bishop tells us, cause I, I heard just what you just said, uh, you know, and, and people need to understand what you just said and how it's, how we qualify what you just said with the word of God, because we know that Ephesians six tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's what, that's what we think we're wrestling with, but he, we are told we are not wrestling with that. And we are told that we're dealing with what principalities against powers and, and rulers of, of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. So that means it's above you. That means it's trying to suffocate. It's trying to cut off your communication. You and I have to be determined enough that we're not going to let anything penetrate nor damage nor cut off our communication language, which is prayer, which is worship, which is praise between you and our God. We should never, we should never let anything or anyone cause us to become so damaged that our relationship with God is hindered. God does not want that to happen to us, and nor should we. we again, it's, it's that word I used even when I was at when I when I was there at convoc, you know convocation. Yeah, we have to understand that what we have with God is sacrosanct. It is so valuable, so huh. important that you don't let anything hinder what you have with your God. Hallelujah. Nothing. Nothing. And I, and I don't know about anyone else at this table, but I I, I believe I, I know Bishop Kevin L. Benton Sr. I, I, I think I know Simpson. Simpson is not going to let nothing compromise. Come on, sir. All right. That means no one and nothing compromise my relationship with my God. My relationship with him is so important that I have to be willing to give my all in order that he understands, Lord, I will not let go of what you and I have because Hallelujah. it is just that important. Hallelujah. I hope you all are receiving this on this morning. So let's jump into where we're headed. Bishop, we started on Monday. This, this whole concept that we're having right now, this conversation of the concept of worship is why I have to learn the value of obedience. Yes. I have to because there is no there is no real relationship without obedience. There's no real relationship, morning manna, without obedience. You and your children, for those of us who are blessed to have them, you know that the stronger the obedience of your child is to the instructions that you provide, the safer the environment is that you provide for them. The, the stronger the relationship is with you and your child when they walk in obedience. It is only when they walk in disobedience that they get into trouble. It is only when they walk into disobedience, walk in disobedience, that they get in trouble. And so Paul is quite definitive, Bishop, in Ephesians 2, where he wants us to understand all of us came into the world, please read the scripture for yourself and understand it. All of us born in sin, shaping in iniquity, come in disobedient. When you look at a child, a child doesn't even have to be taught, Bishop. They have that attitude. It's mine. Ooh. Some of the first words they often say is no. We come in with that sin nature. It's embedded in us. It's an innate characteristic born in every individual. And so Paul says, in times past, that's how you live. You were just disobedient. Everything had to be done your way. Everything had to be seen from your perspective. You dominated, your flesh dominated your life. And so you walked according to the course of this world. That's the way the world lived. The world, Bishop, lives in disobedience to God. The world lives. It turns on its own axis in disobedience to God. The course of this world, according to who? The prince of the power of the air. That's Satan. He is, when he came into the garden, which you're going to talk about here momentarily, uh, he comes in, Bishop, and he becomes the prince of the power of the air. He operates in the spiritual realm and right. causes many of us to walk in obedience. 
Paul said he's the prince of the power of the air, the spirit bishop, the attitude, the mentality that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So Ooh. you're going to have to ask yourself today because the measurement of your DNA is in your obedience. The measurement of, please don't tell me you are a child of God. You have your father's DNA and you walking in disobedience. You're counter to the scripture. The scripture says you have everybody, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So for those of you, those of us who walk in disobedience, you're telling me you still have the mentality. I do what I want, win what I want. I go where I want. I say what I want. I, you walking in disobedience when you understand, when you fail to understand that I'm no longer my own. I've been bought with a price. I'm surrendering my will and becoming obedient to the will of God, to the word of God, to the things of God. Your thoughts, Bishop, as we talk this morning about the spirit of disobedience. Well, Bishop, I was sitting here, I was sitting here contemplating uh, how how the how it is that we don't seem to understand that 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 word disobedience uh if we if we were to pull it apart it requires us to admit something and i and, and you were honing in on it when you talked about how we come into this world and some of our first language is to di be disagreeable no and 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 it, it and, and that child looks cute, right? You know, and we even we even play up on that as parents. You know, oh, he's so cute. Uh, you know, no, that's not cute, honey. That's not cute. Not at all. When that child, when that child is cutting up and acting like he or she owns the room, that's not cute. That needs to be corrected. And and so in Colossians 1, 21, it says, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds yes. because of your evil behavior. Yes, sir. It speaks to the nature of, of us. Just, but just because we're here, Bishop, doesn't mean that we are that we don't have a relationship with God. Uh -huh. We, You and I need to make sure that, because in verse 22 of, of Colossians 1, it says, but now he has reconciled uh -huh. us by Christ's physical body through the death to present us holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. Mm -hmm. What more can we say then? Because if the, if the devil, the prince and power of this air, he's not earthbound like we are. This dude goes as, as over in the book of Job, he goes to and fro throughout. He doesn't linger in just one spot. He's traveling, trying to do what? Seeking to devour whom he may, all right? Yes. He goes around like a roaring lion. Yes. I, we done talked at this table so many times. The devil is not earthbound like we are. Yeah. He's going to move. He's going to, He's he tries to be an influencer, Bishop. Uh-huh. And if he can influence me to say, think, or act a certain kind of way, because it goes back to what you started talking about early on. You know, we need to consider what? Consider our thoughts. Yes. Consider our what? Speech. Speech. And then consider our actions. Those three things are important to understand. We can, if, if my spirit, if my spirit is contrary wise to the spirit of God, I'm disobedient. Plain yes. and simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm hoping we will consider that, Bishop, with all sincerity. My, my hope this morning, our hope this morning is that, Bishop, I want the people of God, because I'm really, I'm always concerned with the listener and the listener being the born again believer, the child of God. I, I, until we can get the unbeliever saved, there's not a whole lot we can teach them. But the believer this morning is who we're talking to. Remember, Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus, the church at right. Ephesus were comprised of both Jew and Gentile or people who were believers. So he's talking to them and wanted them to understand there's a difference between an act of disobedience and the spirit of disobedience. I'm concerned, Bishop, about, about believers walking intentionally in disobedience, knowing you're disobedient. We're going to see in scripture, 
where he's not just talking about disobedient to God, disobedient to the word of God, but also obeying those that have the rule over you. There is a bishop, there is a spirit in the church, I'm telling you, where people feel like steel, I'm grown, I'll do what I want to do. And that's dangerous language coming from a born again believer. I am not suggesting to you that you don't consider leadership, consider what's being asked of you, consider your ways. I am suggesting to you that make sure you're not one who has a disobedient spirit, who has a mindset that I'm going to do what I want to do. That's what the enemy was kicked out of glory for, that very mentality that I will be like the most high God. I will usurp authority. He walked in a level of disobedience, Bishop, and disobedience always leads to disloyalty. Yes, sir. Disobedience yes, sir. always leads. There's some of the first people I thought were the most loyal people, Bishop, until I recognized this, this person is just walking in a level of disobedience that's unbelievable. And it always is in leadership. I said on Monday, I'll say it again. 90% of the people who I've had to struggle with in terms of disobedience, nine out of 10 were collar wearers. Nine out of 10 were title holders. Nine out of 10 were people who thought once I got that level of authority, I can do what I want to do. I can say what I want to say. And Bishop, he attacks the place where the power is. The power is in the leadership. The power is in the difference makers. The power is in the decision makers. Those, that's where he fights us so. Yes, Disobedience sir. leads to disloyalty leads to dysfunction. That's why the church mm -hmm. is in the place that mm -hmm. it's in. This is why the, 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 the family is in the place that it's in. This is why, because we got a bunch of dysfunctional leaders who are disobedient. You can trace their dysfunction back to their disobedience. You can trace their disloyalty back to their disobedience. And you can trace the disaster of the relationship, the disaster of the ministry, the disaster back to somebody walked in obedience disobedience. Somebody decided that they will walk in disobedience. Let me cover this, Bishop, and move quickly so we can get to where we're going this morning. When we think about it and we look at Moses' act of disobedience, man, Bishop, when God told Moses, listen, I need you to speak to the rock. I need you to speak to the rock. When you speak to the rock, water will flow out. I don't need you. I don't need you striking the rock. See, Moses, you done got to where you think you're bigger than who you are. You, It's this God complex, Bishop. We start thinking we're God. We start thinking that the church are our people. The church is not your people. Right. You know, the church don't belong to you. They're God's people. And Moses forgot that. And he began to smite the rock. And when he smote the rock, he lost. He lost out on what God had for him, Bishop, which was to take the people into the promised land. He lost out on it because of his disobedience, Bishop, which says to me, you can be in a position like Moses was and still be disobedient. So right. don't hit me with that guy. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I ain't going. No, you can be in a position of authority and yet be disobedient. And this is why we must deal with this attitude today, Bishop. Your thoughts. Well, well, that 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 speaks very clearly to how how sometimes um, we don't really think about leadership like we ought to. Because I heard Bishop Ben say, in order to be a good leader, you should be the you should be the best second you should be. Yes, sir. So if, if I'm not being a, the best second, you see, I'm always focused on trying to remove you from being who you are in your position. So it, it really does cause us to think real, uh, it should at least, to think real hard about your role, your responsibility, what you're doing, what you're not doing. I would rather be the best second, Bishop, so that people don't have to worry about me. Don't, don't, don't be jealous of me. Just do what you see me do because I'm trying to show you in order to be a good leader, you have to be a good follower. You yes. cannot, you, you know, Jesus put it like this. He says that if you're going to be, if you're going to be first, you got to be servant of all. Hallelujah. If you're Hallelujah. going to be chief, you got to, you got to submit yourself to being able to uh, lower yourself to being able to lift everybody else up. So I think I learned from my own creator. I think I learned from Jesus himself 
He said, I did not come to be served. I came to serve. Yes. If that becomes our mentality, Bishop, if that becomes our roles and our responsibilities, then and only then will we begin to understand God is expecting something different from yes. us. Hallelujah. And that difference is not to be disloyal, not to be dysfunctional, and certainly not to be disastrous in the kingdom of God. We are supposed to be the ones who brings people together to make sure that the whole is benefited and not just the individual. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Bishop, we must develop the mentality. And I, I'm, I'm grateful to God because we, we, we have to understand that we are kingdom minded people. See, we struggle, Bishop, leaving. This is why God tell Moses, listen, listen, take the shoes off your feet. Take, 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 take them sandals off your feet over there because the ground you're getting ready to step on is holy ground. And he didn't mean holy as in the sense of, you know what, you, you're not good enough to be here. He's saying there is a difference in my presence than it is over there. When you come over here, you don't get to say, I'm grown. I do what I want to. You say that over there. When you step into the kingdom, there is a different mentality. And Bishop, everybody's not ready for that. They're not. And by the time we find out you're not ready, we done already ordained you. By the time Ooh. we find out you, 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 you slicked us. You, you, yeah. By the time we know. put you in a position of authority, and now we discover you were disobedient all the time. You were just hiding it because you had an agenda. You were hiding it because you had an agenda. And See? God says to Moses, listen, I need you to understand something. I'm calling you from over there to over here. You want to be in the kingdom. And in the kingdom, there is a word you need to learn from the jump. And it's called submit. Huh. Yeah, submit yeah, yeah. and order. Submit yeah. and order. And Bishop, we were not born to submit. Not us. We are not creatures of submission. It takes a lot for us to submit. And we bring that mentality into the body of Christ. We bring that mentality off of the streets into the church. This is why we have mess like we do, because you bring in that mentality into the church. And you can't bring that mentality. It won't work. The church can't function if everybody wants to be the pastor. The fellowship ain't going to work if everybody wants to be the primate. It ain't going to work. If everybody wants to be out <clears throat> in front, it's not going to work. Somebody has got to be. And Bishop, this is why I try to carry myself in such a manner. I wasn't playing when I was preaching on, 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 on Saturday. The Lord said to me, son, your mantra has to be, what do they see when, when they, they see me? And I, Bishop, I, I, I wrestled with that, that thought that whole night. And I began to ask myself, even a Bishop Simpson, what does he see when he looks at me? What, what do these people see when they look at me? I had to ask myself that. And then I realized I have to carry myself in such a way that when they look at me, they see somebody worth following, worth believing in, worth pursuing after. And you and I have to become extremely careful because when you walk in disobedience, you breed disobedience. When you as a leader walk in disobedience, you breed disobedience. That's why it frustrated the heart of God, Moses. You're going to, you, 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 you know what? You're going to mess around and Joshua going to end up being like you because he's watching you. Joshua going to end up being like you. So Moses, you want to smite the rock? Okay, then you, you we're going to have some trouble. You can't get into the promised land. I can't let you lead any farther because you haven't learned the first act of leadership. Wow. You be obedient. You wow. got to learn how to be obedient. You, you wow. know what I found out, Bishop, that, that God honors obedience. God yes, he does. honors obedience. Oh, my God. Yes, he, he honors obedience. And you got to learn the difference between. I'm not talking about just blind obedience. I'm not talking about blind obedience. Please don't be that carnal where I have to break it down all the way to that level. We're not talking about just blindly following somebody. We're talking about being un, having a obedient spirit. And I told you all on, on Monday, Abraham's act of disobedience. Remember how Abraham is disobedience following his wife, following the instructions of Sarah, who's bothered because she can't have the child. Mm, we know the story. Abraham and Sarah end up getting their Ishmael bishop instead of their Isaac. Yeah. Ishmael, Paul tells us, was the son of the flesh. Son of the flesh. Every time you disobey God, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. 
even though God is merciful towards Moses, merciful towards Abraham, it's going to cost him Ishmael, even though God blessed him, Bishop, it Ishmael is in his generations are still causing problems. Yep. Still to this day, that that wrong decision of Abraham's, that disobedient act, even though God cleaned it up for him, blessed Ishmael, he's still paying for it today. Because when you fail to wait on God, you get your Ishmael instead of your Isaac. So when you want to walk in disobedience and you think you got away with it, don't fool yourself. Sooner or later, the ways of death will show up. Your yes, thoughts. sir. Your thoughts. Uh, I, I, Bishop, I, I had to go back over to um, 1 Samuel because what the topic is, is so important to, to draw out why this word means something so special to us because as you just as you as you just indicated bishop how how that sometimes we confuse obedience with blind loyalty yeah okay blind loyalty is not what bishop Benton is talking about not at all we're talking about we're talking about divine obedience you see so in first samuel uh, ver, uh chapter 15 verse 22 and and samuel said has the lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey, Come to on. obey Bishop, yes, is better than sacrifice. Yes. And and I, I and let me just say this: Samuel was not suggesting uh that sacrifice wasn't important, but it's what it's how I bring the sacrifice. Did, did I bring the sacrifice? with an attitude of gratitude, did I bring a sacrifice out? Because because no, notice something, both Cain and Abel brought something to God. Cain's sacrifice, Cain's offering wasn't acceptable to God. Abel's words, yeah. Abel's, Abel's offering was acceptable. So uh, yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving my, my, my offering in the house of worship. Yes, I'm coming to church, but you're coming to church with the wrong attitude. My God, you're coming to church with, with a mean spiritness. You, 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 yeah. You know what? Thank you, Elder, for showing up today. Thank you. But look at the attitude you walked in the house of God in. Wait yeah. a minute. We just got to tell you we're to enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. You're not coming in with the right spirit. So it isn't, what, it isn't what I'm coming to get necessarily. It's what I'm bringing. Yeah. What am I bringing to God? Yeah. Now, now, now don't mistake this. If I'm, bring, if, if I'm messed up, yes, I understand. You know what? I need to come to God to get this off of me. Hallelujah. I need to, because I know if I stay at home, the devil is going to mess with me. Let me bring this attitude that I have with the intent, though, to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not to let it fester, because if I let it fester, then I'm going to end up damaging somebody else. Now, wait a minute. Look at the position you're in, Bishop. Hallelujah. What if Bishop then came into cathedral praise with, the, with just, I mean, just mad? Yes. Preaching yes. over the pulpit, mad. Disobedient. Yes, sir. Okay. Everything Bishop Bedden says is not going to be received. Why? Because Bishop Bedden is walking in a spirit of disobedience. Hallelujah. And I need us to understand that, Bishop, because we are servants. Again, 90% of, if not 100% of what we're talking about is designed for born again believers. You and I cannot afford to walk in disobedience. It's dangerous for you and I who profess to have the mind of Christ to be disobedient, to walk in, to be motivated by the spirit of disobedience. So I want to share our screen, Bishop, for just a second. Those of sure. you who have to go, I understand, but I, I, I got to get this out this morning. We've got to get this out this morning. We need to talk about the Genesis. Where did this come Originate. from? Originate. Yes. Where did it come from? Where did it originate? What's up behind it? Because see, some of you, some people, Bishop, yeah. they think they're right. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. I can't get away from that. And when you do what you do, you, you have the mentality, I don't care what they say, 
this is how I feel. You shouldn't be in leadership position right about now. When you have that mentality, uh, I'm going to do, and you can see it, Bishop. They wear it on them. They yeah. wear it unapologetically. They wear it on them. Unapologetically, they make the decisions and they impact. You remember the 12 tribes. You remember the 12 tribes. You remember the, the 12 spies. One each was a leader from one of the tribes, went into the land. Moses, they walked in disobedience, Bishop. Moses said, go back, go there, confirm what God has said. Not only did they not confirm what God had said in the sense that the land is ours, but they brought back a negative report. Yeah. It, it's your disobedience. You done brought it back to the whole tribe and the whole tribe about ready to follow your foolishness. This is the danger of a disobedient person, Bishop. The genesis of disobedience starts in the garden. We got to know that. It, we got to know that. Yes. And, 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 and I'm not picking on a gender, my sisters. I'm not picking on a gender. I'm talking about the spirit of disobedience, where it originated, how we need to be concerned about it. The Bible says that the woman saw that the tree was good for food. She saw that it was pleasant to the eyes. She saw that it was a tree that desired to make one wise. They've already been given the instructions, Bishop. They've already been given the instructions to be obedient. There's two trees in the garden, two of them, two of them that I'm concerned about. There's a whole lot of trees, but there's only two that God highlights. There's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and there's a tree of life. Here, please don't miss this. Please don't miss this. Please don't miss this. Because the principle never dies. There's always the choice. It never dies. It's the same. God, it's the same. You have a tree of life. You have a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We like that tree, Bishop. We like that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We like options. Oh, we like options. Mm -hmm. So now I have the option of having the knowledge of good and evil. You don't need the knowledge of evil is what God <laughs> was saying to them. You don't need that knowledge. I want to find out what's really in you. You don't really need that knowledge. What you should choose is life. I'm going to put a tree in there called life. And if you eat from that tree called life, you will forever be in the state that you're in having dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, the beast of the field. They would have ever had that level of life. Eternally, they would have been an authority. What do they choose? They choose disobedience to the word of God. Disobedience to the word of God. Why? Because she saw that the tree, the enemy paints the picture. So she looks at the tree and with her eyes, Bishop, her eyes, she began to lust after. The tree is good for food. The tree is pleasant to the eye. The tree is one that desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and influenced, Bishop, influenced her husband and he ate it with her. So don't tell me disobedience is not rooted in influence. Influence. You influence people with your disobedience. Oh, my God. You influence people with your disobedience. And the Bible is clear, Bishop, that what they, were, what, what they surrendered to was the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. She saw that it was good. This is where disobedience is rooted. They saw that it was good for food. She saw that it was pleasant to the eyes. It was beautiful. Huh? And it's the pride of life, desire to make one wise. There is a segment in the, in the building, Bishop, who wants power, the pride of life. That's why they walk in disobedience. I know a better way of doing it. There is a better. You ain't got to listen to the pastor. We ain't got to listen to the bishop. He, there's more than just him. He ain't the only one. He ain't. A, they walk in that level of pride, Bishop. And they want to be one that makes one wise. And they lust after with their eyes. She lusted after the fruit with her eyes, lusted after it with her flesh. And before you know it, Bishop, they were walking in disobedience. Your thoughts? Bishop, I, I, I went back because I know that it's in my book. And I believe it's also in yours. In, in Genesis 2, uh, uh, 9, it says, out of the ground, God made, the, the Lord made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight 
and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now that's important to be said, right? Because yeah. when we get over to the se to the uh, 17th verse, it says, but. Now you, God then said something. Now he's, he's reminding us, I need you to hear what I'm getting ready to say. He says, but of the tree of knowledge. He didn't say we couldn't eat of the tree of life. Uh -huh. I haven't found it in my book. It's not, not in your that. book. He not never said that. we couldn't eat of that tree. He said of any of the trees, he says, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He says, you shall not eat of it, for it is the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Bishop, let me say then to what your point is. When someone say, I don't have to listen to Bishop Benton. I don't have to listen, listen to Bishop. Well, I think the scripture says, though, how can they hear without the preaching? Yes, sir. See, you, you, can, you think you're hearing stuff, but you're not hearing truth. You think you're hearing, but you're not. Li how can they hear without the preacher? Hallelujah. And how can I preach unless I'm sent to you? And the word says, how beautiful the feet of them who brings the gospel of peace. So, so if you think you're hearing, you know, well, God talks to me too. Didn't say God don't talk to you. Mm. Question is, do you listen to God? Hallelujah. You can, you, it's just like, it's just like your children. I, you tell your children, yeah, yeah, dad, yeah, mom, I hear you. No, you, you, you hear me, but you're not listening to me. Sir, yes, sir. The word says be doers of my word and not hearers only. We think we're good hearers, but we're not good doers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time for us to be doers of this word, Bishop. Yes. And not hearers. Yes. Why didn't why didn't the devil want man to reach and eat of the tree of life? He wouldn't have a job right now. Hallelujah. It'd be definitely he, out of it. He wouldn't have a job right Hallelujah. now. Because Hallelujah. the man was talking to wisdom every day. Yes, sir. He didn't have to go get it from a tree. He was talking to wisdom every day. Yes. I'm gonna leave it at that, Bishop. No, you, you know, Bishop, it's the, it's, the, it's the spirit of the enemy. And the, the, he acted, the, Lucifer conducted himself the same way in glory. That's why the spirit, you can't change. It's the, the root of it remains the same. The devil wanted to be in charge. He wanted to sit on the throne of God. He, and this is where this will be. Anytime you find a, I'm telling you, anytime you find a person walking in disobedience, it's because they don't want to submit. That's the that's the root of it. Adam, mm -hmm. Eve, Eve got to a place, Bishop. Eve got tricked into a place where the enemy inflicted her with his spirit, his mentality. The tree of the knowledge, he made her believe that having the not because he said you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You don't you, you don't need to be like God. There's certain things you don't need to know. You don't need to know evil, Eve. You don't need to know evil. You just need to know God. You don't need to know evil. She got hoodwinked, Bishop. She got bewildered and she took from the tree of the knowledge. And Bishop, we go back to that tree time and time again. Bishop. Every time you pick up that phone trying to figure out, what did she say? What did Bishop. he do? What did he, you go back to that tree? So you are motivated by the knowledge of good and evil. You want both of them. You want that. Listen, I don't care about how good the knowledge is. If it came from the wrong source, it came from the tree that God said, don't touch. So it can be good knowledge. It's still from the wrong tree. Tell me how that's good for you. Oh, well, the, the, the preacher told me, I don't care if the preacher told you. If it came from the wrong tree, the knowledge is not good for you. The knowledge was not good for Adam. The knowledge was not good for Eve. And but listen, Bishop, it seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. When you understand that, beloved, you understand that disobedience 
is disrespect. When you, you, Bishop, Eve and Adam disrespected what God said. Yes, sir. Disrespected straight up what straight God said. Up. When you walk in disobedience and you know, when God says to you, I need you to forgive them. And you say, I'm not going to do it. You straight up disrespectful to the word of God. And you're walking in disobedience. Now, they may have afflicted you, done you wrong. Who's in the worst condition? The person who hurt you, who may be a sinner, too blind to realize what they really did, or you who have had your eyes open and you know you're supposed better. to forgive, but you walk in disobedience. You just done flat out made it up in your mind. I'm not going to do it. We're going to take your happy self to the church Ooh. and shout on Sunday, knowing full well you have not walked in obedience. You've disrespected the word of God. You sitting over here, there is a way that seemeth right. So now you coming up with your own way how to fix them. You coming up with your own way on how you're going to execute revenge. You coming up with your own way on how you walk in in disobedience. And disobedience is disrespect to the word of God. Disobedience is dishonor to the will of God. When you walk in disobedience, you dishonor the will of God. You're Ooh. telling God you're smarter than him. Come on, sir. You're telling him you done created a way that is better than him. Who are you to tell? She straight up dishonored the will of God. It was the will of God for them not to eat of that tree. So now you think you're smarter than God, which is what the devil wants. You will be like God. You want to be that. like God. You want to control. You want to be in control. You said it. I'm grown and I'll do what I want to do. You want to be God. Mm, 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 you mm. want to be God. Won't you just go on in a minute? Uh, I want uh, you. You want to be God. You got that from your father, the devil. That's not God's DNA. Jesus no, said sir. that's your father, the devil. He did that in the beginning. He lied in the beginning. He lied to you. Lying now. Disobedience is disrespect. To the word of God, disobedience is dishonor to the will of God, and disobedience finally, Bishop, is, is disregard, disregard to the, the wisdom, wisdom of God. <laughs> Whenever Bishop the Holy Ghost had helped me, he say, "Son, because you know I got this plan, Bishop, that I was, you know, I'm planning on how I'm going to handle this," and and I could hear the Holy Ghost saying, "Oh, you got a plan? Wow, oh, 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 you you, you got a plan?" By me? Yeah, you, you ain't even read it by me, but you, you got a plan. Okay, okay. so you just going to disregard my word as if my word is not Me's better nothing. than your plan. We See, we do that, Bishop, when we're vulnerable. We do that when we're mad. We do that when we're upset. We don't want to consult God. But this is why Solomon in his wisdom says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean lean not. not to your own understanding. When you lean, lean, when you just lean, he didn't even say do it. When you lean on, depend on your own understanding, you disregard the wisdom of God. Your thoughts, Bishop. Bishop, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here having a moment because I go, I have to go back to that verse again. And I looked at Genesis 2, 17 again. It clearly says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should, uh, I'm sorry, it says, uh, but the, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not of it, eat of it. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. I, I, I had to go back just for a moment because the reason I say I went back because the devil said to the woman, you will be like God. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. If this says, if I eat of that tree, I'm going to surely die. When did God die? I need to understand this. I need someone to explain yeah. to me, when did God ever die? Because if I'm eating of this tree and God said, I'm going to surely die if I eat of it, how can the devil tell me that if I eat of it, I'm going to be like God? You see, we need to hear what, the, what God has said and we need to always take what the devil is trying to say to us and put it against what God has already said about us. See, because if we never know what the word of God says concerning us, we will tend to do like the woman and not have substance, but we're simply moved by a desire. God wants us to have substance. 
And what's substantive, what's substantive in this word is that I got lied to. Hallelujah. And the devil is always going to do what the devil always have done and always does. He's a good liar. Hallelujah. And if you're not listening to truth, then you will get hoodwinked. You will get bamboozled. You will get deceived. Hallelujah. But God is not mocked. Okay. God shall not be mocked. I would always like to go back to the word of God because disobedience is a disrespect to God's word. It is, it is a dishonor to God's will. It is a disregard for the wisdom of God. When I look at this word, Bishop, I realize now that I need to always deal with a lie with truth. Hallelujah. And God's word is my truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to make these flyers, these, these slides available to everybody. For yes. If you're not, we're going to finish this up on Friday. If you're not uh, on our email distro, then please uh, let us know that you desire the slides. I want to, I want to tackle something as we close Bishop and get your view on because um, I'm, 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 I'm struggling with trying to explain it, but at the same time, um, it troubles me because uh, Jackie says a, a very interesting, makes a very interesting statement. Everyone has a choice. And so I've thought about this for a minute, Bishop. Oh, oh I, love I, I, I love this. I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure if this statement is totally biblically true yeah, and, and factual. And, and, and what I mean by that is this. Sin did a number on mankind. Sin did a number on mankind. And so if everyone has a choice, then if I'm born into sin, shaping in iniquity, was I not robbed of my choice? When, I, when, when a child comes into this world, they're born into sin. And it's like Adam and Eve robbed me of my choice. Now, I'm a slave to sin. That's what the Bible says. Now, if, when, you be, when you become a slave to something, it's like you lose your choice. With the slaves, Bishop, just using that as an analogy, they didn't have no choice. You're a slave. You're, and if they had a choice, they'd have walked off the plantation. They didn't have a choice. They were, many of them were born into slavery. They didn't have a choice. Their choice was taken from them. I understand the premise of the statement. I understand the premise of the, of the statement. But the reality of it is sin robbed a lot of people of their choice. This is why Jesus dies, Bishop, to come and restore us and free us. It's only when you free that you have a choice. The only people who really have a choice are free people. When you continue in my word and den, then you are my disciples. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. You not free until you know the truth. Everybody that doesn't know the truth is still in bondage. Everybody that doesn't know the truth is still in bondage. That's why the gospel must be preached. That's why the gospel must be preached. That's why we must tell them about Christ. Because when we share Christ with them, we free them from the bondage of sin. We free them from the hand of the enemy. And so when you become free, you then now have the choice because you know what sin is. When I was in sin, I didn't know what sin is. I don't know what sin is. I don't know. You can't when, you, when your child is a young child and you don't teach them the laws of the house, don't touch this, don't touch that, don't go over here, don't go over there. When you don't teach them the law of the house, why are you punishing them for what they do not know? They don't have choice. You haven't given them the freedom to have choice. You haven't taught them what is right and what is wrong. The spirit of God the word of God, the presence of God say, son, I'm about to liberate you so you will know right from wrong in terms of sin, sin and that which is not. Now you can walk. This is why God is so 
challenging when it comes to obedience and disobedience. Yeah. Because when you walk in disobedience, you're saying, I know what's right and I know what's wrong. And I make the conscious choice to be disobedient. Eve made the conscious choice to be disobedient because prior to that, both her and Adam were free. They didn't know sin. They had no knowledge of sin. And they made the conscious choice because they were free. Everybody else, we're born into sin and shaping in iniquity. Your thoughts, Bishop? Bishop, I, I, I offer the understanding, and I, and I believe I, I kind of I kind of get what is being said. I ain't gonna say I kind. I do get what is being said. Yeah. Because uh, in in Deuteronomy in Deuteronomy thirty, the Word of God speaks clearly. It says, verse fifteen. He says, "See." I set before you this day life and good, death and evil. But now in that 16th verse, he says, in that I command this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandment and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest yes. to possess it. Now, if you drop down to verse 19, and we have again, God says, I even call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Hallelujah. That I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Yes. Therefore, watch this, choose life. Yes. That both, he says, choose life that both you and your seed may live. Hallelujah. You're right, Bishop. Sin robbed us of the ability to choose right. But we still, once, once we're taught that, you know, there's a lot of people who don't even know that they're, that they're slaves to sin. They have to be taught that they can now choose to not live that way. Yes. So we have to make a decision. Matter of fact, in Joshua uh, chapter 15, verse 24, I believe, uh, no, Joshua 24, 15, Joshua says, you need to choose you this day whom you will serve. Yes. We... See, once you know that you can choose yes. and that there's a right choice versus just doing what the devil has dictated because of sin in this world, you can get out of the place that you find yourself. Yes. Yes. So, I, I, again, like I said, I understand that, that you know, sin robbed us of this, this understanding of what right is. But now that you know that there's a choice to be made, it's time for us to choose right. Yes and not allow ourselves to keep being misled. Uh, and, and I'm gonna have to say it, once you know better, you should be doing better. Right. Okay? Right. It's we true. cannot walk around and keep pleading ignorance when, we didn't, when we've been told by God's word, when God has spoken to us clearly through the men and women of God, that he didn't set two things in front of us, life and death, blessings and curses. Then he tells us which one to choose. We have no excuse, Bishop. Because God himself, the creator of us all, done told us very clearly what to choose. He, just, he says, choose life. And to choose life means I have to choose him. Amen. See, so, so, so Bishop, we, we must realize this from a biblical perspective, not a biblical. biblical perspective. From a biblical perspective, the only people who ever had choice, true choice, choice is Adam and Eve. They're the only two people. That ever had choice outside of Jesus, outside of right. Jesus. Uh, them the only two people because they were born or created without, without sin. sin. They, they didn't have no knowledge of sin. Everybody no. after that was born into sin, robbed of the choice. This is why Jesus must come. And must especially come. when he comes, he brings us truth. It's not just knowledge of good and evil. We keep falling truth. for the wrong tree. We keep going to that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I don't need that. I don't care. I don't need that. You, you keep going on these Facebook people. You keep going on here and you listen to all this foolishness. And you, 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 you're learning good and evil. You're but that is not the will of God for you. You know what the will of God for us, Bishop, is know the truth. And I don't need truth. you knowing what's good and what's evil. I don't need you having 15, 11 dozen people in your ear telling you what's right and what's wrong. I need you to sit before me, get in my word, 
let me teach you the truth. And when you learn the truth, the truth, the only, oh, uh, I got to go. I got to go, Bishop. I, it, 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 it's the truth that makes you free. It's not your feelings. It's not your none emotions. It's none of that. Jesus says, you will know the truth. If you continue in my yeah, word, yeah. not if you go and ask this one and go and ask that one and get their opinion and get this one opinion. If you, you Simpson, if you continue hey. in my word, then you shall know the truth and the truth you know shall make you free. Not if you continue in somebody else's opinion and all of that. We keep <clears throat> going back to that tree, Bishop. We keep going back. And that's why we in the state that we're in. We're, 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 we're still picking from the wrong tree. Bishop, thank you this morning, sir. We got to get No, thank you, sir. You, you, you're, you're back Friday. You're back Friday, Lord willing. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Keep, back as Friday. they say, keep praying for me. Keep yes, praying sir. for me. It, 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 it's just good to have your presence with us. And we're grateful to have you. Lord says the same man, man of God. We, I, I'm, I'm grateful that you're here. I'm grateful that you're at the table. I'm grateful that the Lord has blessed you to, to be a part of us. The wisdom and the knowledge that you bring and share is always meaningful to the body. And so we, we're blessed to have you. And we're thankful to God for how he has brought you into the lives of the people of God. And so, man of God, have a great day. May the Lord continue to shine upon you. Certainly is our prayer. And we're thankful to God for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God. Bless you all. Amen. Bless you, sir. We'll see you soon. Amen. Praise God for you. Amen. Each one of you. Today is that day as well. It's the only. Uh, see, y'all getting it now. You're getting it now. You, you, you're, you're getting it now. The Holy Spirit. God, Lady Rollins, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Uh, listen, uh, two things I want to do. One, give you an opportunity to give your gifts but I want to reiterate in every time I do this, I get stuck because the word is so true. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 Lady Rollins, you, you, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Hmm. Most of us don't want, don't want to believe that. We hear it, but we don't want to believe it. Uh, we have an advocate. We have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit who literally is in us to lead us and guide us to give us truth. Why are you getting your truth from Facebook? I'm not talking about morning manner. I'm talking about this foolishness that some of us be. Why are you getting your truth from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? This is why you're confused. This is why you're mentally challenged. This is why you're walking in disobedience right now. Well, she said, I ain't got to follow that pastor. She says, I, I, I did the Lord speak to me just like he speak to them. Show me that. Show me, show me where that's truth. Show me where God did not state in his word. The apostle Paul says, I'm going to give you the, this one. I'm going to give you that one. And they're going to be for the upbuilding of the saints. They're going to be for the edification of the body so that you won't be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. That's the truth. And the truth, you know, will make you free. No, you just, you, you, you grown now. You want to do what you want to do. Why don't you just go on and admit it? I'm grown. I will do what I want to do. And, and, and I, yeah, I ain't following you. No, no. And, and when that happens, beloved, you miss sight on, on all things. Thank you, Kathy. The Holy Spirit, if you have him, you can have him and not let him have his way. You can have him and not let him have his way. Thank you, Lord. There's so much more left on this tree of life that we want to share with you all on Friday. So much more left on this tree of life. Hallelujah. If you decide, you know what, man of God, I'm, 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 I'm grateful and I'm giving on today. I'm giving on today. One thing you will never, ever, ever be able to say about Bishop Benton is that he uses money as a manipulative tool. The devil is a liar. Uh, I don't use money as a manipulative tool. Your contributions are a blessing to the table and a blessing to the life of the man of God. That, that, that's what this is. For those of you who know it, this is biblical. Just as breaking the bread of life, holy communion, just as the word, they're all biblical precepts that we provide for you in order for you to be blessed. Trust me when I tell you. Come on, Jessica, and can testify and others at the table. We are a blessing every month to certain entities so that you 
will be a blessing. We give to the Fair Haven Women's Shelter. We bless them through your contributions, through your giving. We bless, amen, foreign missions. Every month they hear from the table gifts that we contribute to them. There's a ministry right here in our city that is of the that has pro, that provides outreach for the homeless. Your contributions go to help there. There are those who have come out of prison and are trying to re-enter into society. And they need they need socks, they need personal items, and we are there to help them. That's what we do. That's what the table does. And so for those of you who give to the table, that's where your contribution goes. We help people. And then those of you say, man of God, Bishop Simpson, Bishop Ben, I thank God for you. And I know that it's only right. Those that teach, that labor in the word, they are worthy of double honor. Go do some research. You will discover that Paul is saying double honor means not only do I honor them with the words out of my mouth, but I honor them with contributions that the Lord has given unto me. Again, teaching your decision. I teach the truth. It's up to you which tree you're going to eat from. Because you got them folks over there to tell you, I ain't giving nothing. I ain't, I, what tree are you eating from? That determines your level of wisdom and knowledge that the Lord gives you. I like to put it before you so that you will know exactly what it is that you are, done, are, are doing. Hallelujah. Amen. That, and that's true, Sister Jackie. That, that's true. Everybody's not reached that level of truth. So sometimes I have to try to break it down to them so that they will make sure that they are well aware of it. But you are 100% right. That's how I give. When I give, I give knowing that I'm giving to the cause. I'm giving to the cause of Christ. I'm not giving worried about all of that. I ain't got time to worry about all of that. God sees me giving to the cause. And then my, the, whatever the measure is that he's blessed me to give, that's how I give. And that's why I, I appreciate the table. And so may the Lord bless you on today. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And may he grant you a level of peace that the enemy can't stand. Hallelujah. That peaceful place in God that God has given unto you. So we'll be back. The Lord says again on Friday. Amen. We thank God for each one of you. Remember, as always in our parting, I love you. There is nothing you can do about it. Amen. But whatever you do, stay in his word because his word is alive. We'll see you on Friday. God bless.